Hi folks, Mike again. This is a kind of bespoke video um, relating to a, a question from, from a student that I've got about how it's probably impossible to learn, learn the name of each, each note as you go along the, the neck of the guitar. So, um, I, I went over, there's a, there's a few things, a few kind of, um, little, not tricks, but um, ideas that you can use so that, that the, the neck seems a bit less, a bit, I remember early on it was a really daunting prospect thinking, how am I going to learn all these notes and do I really need to know where each note is? On the neck. Here's, here's the thing. We know that the, the, the bottom string gives an E pitch. There's our E. And we know that the top string gives E. So it's, it goes without saying that whatever, whatever happens on the E string, the bottom E happens on the top E. So if I was to go to the first fret of the E string and play an F, then on the first fret of the E string, is to the floor I play it, it'd be an F. So then on the third fret we've got the G on the top E. On, so on the third fret of the uh, bottom E it's got to be G and so on. So fifth fret A, fifth fret A, seventh fret B, eighth fret C, tenth fret D, twelfth fret E, twelfth fret E. Easy enough. All of the notes on the guitar, almost all of them, all the natural notes, a natural note being one that's just named after a letter. So A, B, C, D, E, F and G are generally two frets apart. So if I was to go to A on the fifth fret of the E string, then the B will be two frets higher on the seventh fret. Except in the case of um, B and C and E and F. So if you play an E, say for instance on the 2nd fret of the D string, then the F would be next door, ascending, so that means going higher. So the D, take your finger off because that's now effectively 2 frets away. Back to the E, up 1 to F, so from F, the next natural note is going to be 2 frets higher, and that's G. That G you'll notice on the 5th fret is the same note as the G string. Okay, so let's let's go back for a second. So we've got an E. We know we've got an E. Got an E on the bottom string, we've got an E on the top string. Every note on the E strings corresponds with the same note 2 frets higher on the D string. So if we go to the 2nd fret of the D string, we've got an E. So that we've got three E's there, three different on uh, low E, an octave higher on the second fret of the D string, and E nears to the floor. So that's going to work all the way over the neck. So if we played the two F's, then there's going to be an F two frets higher on the D. So if we go to the third fret, play two G's, there's going to be a G two frets higher on the D. If we go to the fifth fret, we get A, we get an A on the on the two frets higher on the D. Goes like that all the way up the neck, obviously. The two frets higher rule applies uh, applies to the A string and the G string as well. So if we play an A and we play two frets higher on a G string, we get an A, obviously an octave higher. So if we go play it on the second fret of the A string, we get a B. We get a B two frets higher on the on the G string. Third fret on the A we get C, fifth fret on the G we get C, and so on. Fifth fret is D, seventh fret on the G is D, seventh fret is E, seventh fret on the G is E, eighth fret F, so tenth fret on the G is F, tenth fret on the A is G, twelfth fret on the G is G, and then we're back to the. Uh, 
back to the original A note, an octave higher on the 12th fret. So we're going to get an A on the 14th fret of the G string. Make sense so far? Okay. Um, if you if you if you wanted to tune the guitar and you didn't have a tuner, you would go to the fifth fret. Now what I mean by that is, if you're on the E, you go to the first fret, you get an F. Third fret, you get G. Fifth fret, you get A. That A is the same note as the A string, or should be. The two notes have a slightly different timbre. By that I mean they sound a little bit different mainly because the, the E string is thicker and it's a different string than, than the A string. Uh, it's a fretted note on the fifth fret of the A. It's the it's the open uh, string on, on the open A. So we get a different kind of different quality of note, but it should be the same pitch. It should be 110 hertz at the fifth fret and on the open A. Okay, so on the fifth fret of the A string, we get D, which is the, the same pitch as the open D string. Fifth fret on the D string, we get G, same pitch as the open G. Now this is where things get get slightly uh, confusing because we go to the fourth fret on the G string and we get a B. It should be the same notes as the open B string. But then we go back to the, the fifth fret on the, on the B, where we get an E. It should be the same as the open E. And these days we've got electronic tuners and tuner apps on the, uh, on, on the smartphone and um, tuners that, that are built into, built into amps. So it's almost, it's almost, a dying art to, to tune a guitar in, in in that way. It's called relative tuning because uh, the strings are now in tune in relation to each other. In other words, in between the E and the A is a fourth, in between the D and the A is a fourth, in between the D and the G is a fourth, in between the G and the B is a major third, in between the B and the E is a fourth. The problem with, with relative tuning is is that we need the A string to be 110 hertz. I've got no guarantee that I've got 110 hertz without a, an instrument to measure it. Unless you've got perfect pitch, which I probably haven't. <laughs> okay. So, um, if you were to go to the third fret of the A string, you'd get a C. We know that the B, B is next door to C, but B is lower than C, because if you think of the ascending A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and notice there's only A, B, C, D, F, and G. That's all we get in music. A, B, C, D, F, G. The next note is going to be back to A, an octave higher than the, than the initial A. So if we're on the third fret of the E string, sorry, on the third fret of the A string, we get C. Two frets higher is going to be D, obviously. If you go back to the C, one fret lower is going to be B. So we're on the third fret of the A string. If we go to the B string and we play the first fret, it's going to be C, isn't it? So whatever happens on the A string is the same on the B string, two frets down. So if we're on the fifth fret of the A, we get D. So we get D on the third fret of the B. Seventh fret of the A. 5th fret of the B we get E and so on always remember B and C are next door E and F are next door everything else is 2 frets apart next door as in 5th fret and 6th fret is called a semitone if we go back to the 5th fret and play 2 frets higher that's called a tone if we go back to the 5th fret and play down 1 that's a semitone from, from the original note Go to the fifth fret and go to the third, that's a tone. You'll always recognise the semitone because it, it's the it's the, the theme from the film Jaws.
everything that happens on the open strings E, A, D, G, B, E is exactly the same at the 12th fret E, A, D, G, B, E um, the difference being each note is now an octave higher at the 12th fret an octave meaning eight eight notes so uh, you'll have noticed one so if we take, in, take into account the open call that one and then the first fret two one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen there's 12 notes before we get back to the, the original notes at the octave. But an octave means eight, and that's because there's eight notes on A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So by the time we get back to the A, we've moved eight steps. A being one, B being two, C being three, D being four, E being F, F being G, G being seventh, and then back to the A, the eighth, the eighth note so it's called an octave but there are, there are sharps and flats in between it's slightly confusing on the guitar but if you were to go to a piano you would see all the, all the white notes as naturals and all the black notes as sharps and flats much easier to, for you to, to go to a piano and work out this, this kind of thing ok so everything that happens at the, at the open string E F G it is exactly the same from the 12th fret onwards. So if we start at E on the 12th, next door is F, semitone higher. On the uh, 15th is G, a tone higher. Tone higher than that, we get A. Tone higher than that, we get B. Semitone C. And at the 22nd fret, we've got D again, the high D. Okay. So. Um, I've jammed in a lot of information into a very short time there, so I'll just leave that lesson there.